Video game companies are often doing stupid crap, and uh, in order to paper over that crack in the veneer, sometimes they have to say sorry. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks 10 times, game companies had to apologize. Starting off with number 10, probably the most obvious one of the last few years, CD Projekt Red apologizing for the launch state of Cyberpunk 2077. Released on December 10th, 2020, Cyberpunk 2077, I mean, it was one of the most highly anticipated games of the year. Hell, of all time. People were hyped to the moon for this thing. And when they actually got their hands on it and found the retail product to be a glitchy, often very ugly mess, uh, not happy. I mean, it's hard to understate it that much. But the state of the game on the PC was not great. Uh, on consoles, total disaster. Remember, there weren't next-gen versions of the game at that time. The PlayStation 4 release was blurry unloaded textures and visual bugs every few steps and the game was simply not ready for launch when it came out what makes cyberpunk 2077 different from a lot of games on this list is the publisher cd project made the game and they also published it uh the future and livelihood of the company depended on the success of this game and clearly they understood that because in january they I issued a public apology acknowledging the many issues with the game and saying they were working to work like fix it developer apologies are so common that they're practically meaningless anymore but in this case you have to believe cd project red meant it because there was no going back if this game was a failure their entire reputation was at stake so they had to improve um not only the game but their image if they wanted to survive it took a while we did get a next gen patch a couple years later in 2022 and the major gameplay overhaul patch took until 2023 alongside phantom liberty uh, that's three extra years for a game to actually get particularly good but i mean it's an it is a pretty impressive reversal because in all seriousness this game looked unsalvageable in 2020 but they fixed it and hopefully they've learned their lesson for whatever comes next because it can't be another three-year fix it up project and number nine Rockstar had to apologize for the GTA trilogy. Uh, another game that launched in an absolute pathetic state uh, was the definitive edition of the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. Um, anything but. You'd think that three remastered PlayStation 2 games with a few modern features, giving it a few visual touch-ups, you'd think that would be a, a basically a cinch. But Rockstar really cheaped out with the whole thing, and it shows. Seriously, I don't know how a studio that takes a property like Grand Theft Auto, takes the three games that put them on the map, and releases a product as slapdash and sloppy is this one all three games plagued by ugly quote-unquote remastered visuals and bugs many of them not in the original games songs were cut from soundtracks a lot of side characters look like absolute crap the fog was all messed up it was a mess it's kind of sad that the original version of the games at least on pc looked better than the remaster to add insult to injury when they released the trilogy they pulled the original games from the rockstar games launcher so you couldn't even play the originals if you wanted to anymore uh, people were not happy about this the negativity around the collection was so vocal that eventually Rockstar responded with an apology. Like pretty much all these messages, the actual content of the apology is meaningless. It's mostly a lot of marketing speak and weasel words, but in this case, Rockstar did at least acknowledge the technical problems with the remaster. They also promised to return the original GTA trilogy to the storefront, even give the originals away for free to anybody who bought the definitive edition, which isn't a great deal. Like, I think I bought all of these games for a dollar like 10 years ago, but that's better, better than nothing, I guess. Giving people access to the original games was a good move. The Definitive Edition has seen a lot of improvements since the frankly embarrassing launch. It's definitely better, but the new graphics are still pretty divisive. Like, at least they let people play the originals again, because imagine if this was the only way you could play the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. And number eight, Blizzard reverses course on the real money auction. Yeah, they're the undisputed kings of the gaming-related apology. These guys apologize all over the place all the time. They apologize for that terrible Diablo Season 1 patch. They apologize for cutting single player from Overwatch 2. They said sorry for the Blitzchung fiasco. Remember that terrible Diablo Mobile game reveal? Yeah, they kind of apologized for that. I mean, not, not full-throatedly, but they kind of did. The amount of apologies that we get from Blizzard is just, uh, it's crazy. 
crazy. But they mostly boil down to just saying sorry about server issues. The one apology that really stands out to me is related to Diablo 3, where they apologized for the real money auction house and actually followed through on it. One of the many complaints about Diablo 3 back when it first came out in 2012 was its terrible loot. A lot of the blame was directed at the real money auction house in Diablo 3, which is exactly what it sounds like, a place where you could spend real money to buy in-game items from other players. Blizzard designed it after noticing the thriving aftermarket for items in Diablo 2, but the whole thing really offended players, and it seemed like Blizzard was intentionally making loot harder to get to encourage players to use the auction house. I'm not sure how substantiated any of this actually is, but Blizzard did seem to tacitly acknowledge them by one, apologizing for the auction house, and two, completely reworking loot in Diablo 3. These two changes ended up being an overall success for the money and managed to improve the game overall. They didn't just apologize and move on, they actually addressed the problem, which wasn't just some trivial thing to do either. Blizzard was seriously concerned about a possible lawsuit if they removed auctions from the game. That ended up never happening, so all in all, this whole situation ended up working out pretty well for all involved. It's another situation where it took a while, but eventually the company in question actually managed to salvage their game's reputation with an apology. And number seven, the Lord of the Rings Gollum devs apology. I've been looking at some pretty decent apologies where there have been results so far, but there have been some bad ones too. Most of the time, video game company apologies are in one ear, out the other. Sometimes they actually make you stop and look. Uh, like this one from Lord of the Rings Gollum developer, Deodalic. Uh, the game was a miserable slog that nobody asked for. I mean, seriously, why would we want a lore accurate video game about Gollum? One where he spends the majority of the game in prison doing basically nothing. Yeah, thrilling premise there, guys. What's interesting about this one isn't the content of the apology itself, because it's boilerplate corporate crap. Basically, yeah, we know the game sucks. Anyway, we'll patch it later, maybe, I guess, if we get around to it. Perhaps, hopefully, whatever. I have some sympathy. They weren't the biggest company ever, and they were definitely over leveraged making this thing. But the apology didn't sound good, in my opinion. If that's all there was, there wouldn't be a lot to talk about. But later um, in the year, a German publication called Game 2 spoke anonymously to two Deodalic employees who asserted the apology was actually written by publisher Nacon and that they didn't even write it. It was generated using chat GPT. Like, this isn't definitively proven in any way, but if you go back and look at the actual apology, it does look... It kind of, it's got that slightly awkward AI writing style to it. The entire situation feels like Nacon is just throwing Deodalic under the bus in the laziest way possible, uh, but they're both culpable for the mess. In the end, Deodalic closed their entire development division, ending their one and only attempt to break into the AAA games market. And number six, Creative Assembly apologizes and refunds players. It's not something we talk about a whole lot here, uh, but if you're a Total War fan, it's been pretty tough the last few years. Prices on their games keep going up, uh, with more and more slapdash overpriced DLC that kind of bogs the games down, and each new release is coming out buggier and buggier. Eventually, all this nickel and diming must have hit a, a snapping point, because last year, Creative Assembly straight up apologized for pretty much everything fans of their games have been complaining about for a few years. It's one thing to apologize, it's another to actually do what they did, which is permanently lower the price of their newest game, Total War Pharaoh and offered to partially refund anybody who bought it at full price. That's not all they did. They also added additional content to the Shadows of Change DLC to Warhammer 3. So they're making sweeping changes across the board and that's good. It's probably one of the more honest apologies I've seen from developers. Comes off much more sincere than a lot, even a lot of even good ones. They acknowledge the many complaints people have had about their recent game, acknowledge recent layoffs, talk about the cancellation of the game Hyenas, which is a game they were working on hopefully the whole apology leads to a return to form for creative assembly because they've done amazing work in the past sometimes these sort of apologies at the beginning of an end of a company but i don't know if i think about it that way with them because i think that clearing out hyenas and not going to the live service area and returning to what you know they do right probably the right idea and number five, Gran Turismo developers apologizing for the busted car economy. This series had a microtransaction scandal that the developers eventually had to apologize for. It wasn't really any single problem. It was more the overall stinginess of the game. Needed tons of credits to buy new cars, but the game turned off the money spigot early, so unless people were willing to grind for hours, they were usually stuck with only a few cars to play with. That's pretty annoying in a driving game, any driving game, but uh, Gran Turismo, which is a series that, uh, I mean, it's no 
known for handing out cars like they're going out of style. The entire appeal of these games to a lot of people was building out an extensive car collection, but that was basically impossible for the launch of GT7. The only way some players managed to get a lot of cars is through exploits that allowed them to inject controls into their cars that allowed the game to basically play itself and earn tons of credits. It was basically the only way to earn any actual money with the game, which just goes to show how unfair the player economy was. You couldn't even resell cars at lunch. Uh, there's just no excuse for this type of crap. The entire game economy here was just really bad. They did acknowledge the issues and address them in a big update, along with making payouts more generous in general. Uh, they just straight up awarded everybody with a million credits for free too, which is probably the right thing to do. The other major player complaint, the always online requirement though, uh, that never changed. And number four, the Xbox One reveal apology tour. No other way to put it. The initial reveal of the Xbox One was a hilarious disaster. The loss of consumer trust from the tone-deaf boneheader reveal is still being felt by Xbox now. They had all the momentum coming off Xbox 360. Like, everybody loved the Xbox 360. It was the winner of the console wars. And rather than understanding that it's because of the people who bought it that your success hinges on them, Microsoft decided, you know what? We got the numbers, let's exploit them. The thing that set people's alarm bells off was the digital rights management, the DRM that the system was going to employ. It sounded insidious and really not consumer friendly. In fact, quite unfriendly, consumer hostile. Is that the way we, I don't, it seemed pretty hostile towards consumers. And during the Q and A afterwards, Xbox didn't do anything to assuage concerned gamers. If anything, they made it worse. So stick with 360, that's your message. If you don't, well, you don't like it. If, if you have zero access yeah. to the internet, that is an offline <laughs> device. Different Xbox guys were given different answers to the same questions. It seemed like nobody was on the same page and only made everybody fear the worst about the presumably always online console. Microsoft must have noticed the discourse online because by September, they were on an apology tour to try to regain trust of the future console. It was after Xbox and Microsoft rolled back the 24-hour check-ins and online requirements for the system. So clearly they were responding to the initial negativity. Didn't end up saving the system, which never quite managed to reach the popularity of the 360. But the way they did walk back the most controversial aspects of the Xbox One did make for a better console at least if we're gonna try to end this one on a positive note and number three, EA apologizing for SimCity's server issues. EA has done irreparable damage to so many of their brands, from Medal of Honor to Battlefield to SimCity. Uh, hey, here's a great idea. Take a single player uh, city builder and make it always online, because uh, that won't piss anybody off at all. Is there anybody out there who would get angry for such, th oh, everyone? Everyone did? Of course it did. Of course it made everybody who likes SimCity angry. Duh. Just having to be online for the for a game like this is dumb enough. But guess what? It's not just that you were stuck online. That's, I mean, anti-consumer. Uh, but also, it was played with server issues. So you couldn't consume the game a lot of the time. And this was inexcusable even back in 2013. Like, it's a single-player game that they required people to be online for. And they didn't expect a lot of people to be online, I guess which is stupid. The apology was at least pretty straightforward and honest about the issue. On top of that, they offered anybody who bought SimCity one of 18 games uh, for free from EA's catalog. For I guess that's for something at least. That's all well and good, but here's the thing. The server issues were completely unnecessary. The game doesn't even require a central server to run. EA and Maxis swore up and down that the always online requirement was essential for the game to function, but guess what? Not true. And they never fixed it. They never flipped the switch to make the game playable offline, and they never actually apologized for that. And guess what? There hasn't been a SimCity game since. Maxis no longer exists. At least that Maxis. I guess there te technically is a Maxis, but it's not the Maxis that was making the SimCity series. And number two is the day before devs with their pre-apology, a real innovation. Um, I've seen plenty of apologies after the fact, but this is probably the first time a dev has apologized for a game before it. The warning signs were already there about this game and its sketchy trailers, but this apology really should have made it clear to anyone who's interested in the game. They shouldn't buy it. It's barely even apology, more like a call out to their haters and a pathetic 
humble brag than an actual apology. The only actual thing they did say is that they're going to listen to feedback, which, uh, sure, I guess they did because everyone hated the game. And the developers just closed down days after the game came out. Uh, that's one way to listen to feedback, yeah. And finally, at number one is uh, Sony apologizing for the 2011 PSN hack. Back in 2011, the PlayStation Network was down for 24 days. What started as an annoying interruption of service was soon to be revealed as one of the most massive security breaches of all time. On May uh, 1st, Sony's three most senior executives appeared for a press conference where they all bowed their heads in apology for several seconds, according to this Guardian article. The sort of thing that only happens when a Japanese company really screws up. Like, the downtime was bad, but it was nothing compared to the theft of data from 24.6 million Sony Online Entertainment account holders and 77 million PlayStation account holders. The breach was so bad, it forced Sony to basically completely rebuild their network. Like, to say they biffed it would be the absolute biggest possible understatement. They really screwed up. There's no other way to look at it. Multiple security firms have criticized Sony for its method of securing data, all but calling them grossly incompetent for leaving their networks as vulnerable as they were. It gets worse, too. Along with personal data, access a database that contained 12,700 credit card numbers from Sony Online Entertainment, and while most of them were expired, at least 900 were still usable, according to a statement from Sony to GamesIndustry.biz. It was bad, and a profuse apology wasn't going to be enough, so Sony offered a selection of free games to PlayStation users, gave them a month of PSN for free, offered identity theft protection services to those that requested it. It was a nice gesture at the time, I'm not gonna say no to free games, but man, this was a mess. Yeah, they got hacked, so that's not entirely their fault. But if you leave all your doors open and then put a big rob me sign on your door, it's kind of, you know, at least partly your own fault when somebody robs your house, you know? Also, you're just keeping everybody's credit cards in your house. At that point, it's kind of understandable that someone might start to think you're not maybe the best caretaker. Oh, but it's okay. Sony updated the terms of service, so even if somebody seals all your stuff in their house again, you're not allowed to sue them. So, cool change, right? Uh, that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So, click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.